Hi Wendy. Hi. So we're here in London. So random meet up. <laughs> so why are you here today in London? Oh, um, well, it was actually my 40th birthday not too long ago, and so my brother-in-law lives here, so I've come to visit him, and he very kindly offered to take me out to eat to a nice vegan dinner tonight, so that's why I'm here. Oh, I know you from your blog, and mm -hmm. um, what is your blog called? It's The Nomadic Vegan. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to create that blog? Well, um, I love to travel and uh, I had done a lot of traveling already and still plan to do more. And so when I first started learning about veganism and really wanted to become vegan, one of the biggest fears that was holding me back was I thought it was going to ruin travel. You know, I, I didn't even know if it'd be possible to be vegan in some of the places that I've been and I thought at the very least, you know, it's just going to turn everything into a gigantic hassle. I'm going to be spending all my time looking for places to eat and just being stuck eating french fries all day and be really unhealthy. Um, and so unfortunately that did hold me back uh, for quite a while, but eventually when I finally took the plunge and just tried it, I discovered that it was the complete opposite from what I had expected and that there were vegan options everywhere yeah. and it actually made travel better. I enjoy travel mm -hmm. even more now as a vegan than I did before um, because it's really opened this whole new window onto different cultures and different cuisines. You know, I discovered the cuisine in a way that most people don't because I do research beforehand and I discover these vegan dishes that are naturally vegan that are part of the cuisine uh, that most tourists have no idea about and don't get to try because they just kind of stick to the standard things that, uh, that everyone's heard of. Um, so I knew that I had had some serious misconceptions, that I was really wrong about what I thought a vegan travel was going to be like, and I knew that there were, must be other people out there who had the same misconceptions and the same fears. And so I wanted to uh, help them to overcome those fears and to really dispel those myths and tell them that you don't need to worry that uh, being a vegan traveler is a really wonderful thing. Yay! <laughs> What's the best place you've been to that's been really vegan friendly? Um, yeah, interesting question. Um, most of the travel that I've done uh, as a vegan has been in Europe. Um, so, of European countries, I'd say, well, Greece was the very first place where I traveled as a vegan, and I actually um, was just doing a trial run. I had planned to trip to Greece anyway. I was going to be there for three weeks, and I said, okay, I'm going to try being vegan this whole time and mm. see if that works. And, and uh, it worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's not necessarily known as a vegan friendly country and the movement is not necessarily strong there you won't see a lot of veg vegetarian or vegan restaurants in Greece and you might come across people who don't know what it is mm. um, but their cuisine is naturally very vegan friendly um, a lot of that has to do with the culture and the religion in particular in uh, the Greek Orthodox Church they have a lot of what they call fasting periods um, and fasting in the sense does doesn't mean that you don't eat at all, but it means that uh, you don't eat a lot of things that are basically any animal products. It's almost a, a vegan diet that they follow um, during fasting periods. And uh, there are a lot of fasting days uh, in the Greek Orthodox calendar. Um, so naturally, there have been lots of dishes created nice. that, that follow those kind of rules. Um, so Greece is a great one. Italy is another great one. Mm -hmm. Italy is probably my favorite country in the world. And uh, it's another one where, I mean, the movement is growing, um, but at the same time, you know, even though things might not be marked as vegan or you might not hear a lot about the word vegan or even vegetarian, you will find, especially in the south of Italy, so many naturally vegan dishes in the cuisine. So what types of vegan dishes have you tried in Greece and Italy? Well, Greece has a lot of little kind of appetizer dishes called meze. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite common to just order a whole bunch of those and put a meal together that way. Uh, so there are several of those uh, that are vegan. There's one called melizano salata, which is an eggplant type dip. It's mm -hmm. quite similar to baba ganoush in Middle Eastern cuisine. Um, 
there's another one called Scordalia, uh, which is also a dip, um, and it's made mostly with mashed potatoes and garlic. It has a very strong garlic flavor. flavor. There's Dolmades, which people might already be familiar with. It's the stuffed vine leaves. Mm. Um, so they're stuffed with uh, rice and herbs and spices and things. That's totally vegan. Um, and then for main dishes, uh, also stuffed peppers, like red peppers uh, or capsicum, those are, are quite popular and occasionally they will use meat, but usually those are vegan. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things really. Yeah. <laughs> have people found your blog helpful for when they go traveling? Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of positive com comments and, and feedback. Uh, on the blog and people have been really excited and often really surprised to see that you know that there are so many vegan options um, that's one thing I really try to do is to highlight you know the dishes that people aren't familiar with yeah. and um, and let them know that this stuff is out there if you just dig a little bit deeper and and, and it's another way to really you know explore like I said explore the cuisine and explore the culture and the country through its cuisine as well so it's a lot of fun it has, adds a whole another dimension to travel so what are your future plans for your blog um, well uh, yeah lots of plans um, as I said I've been kind of based in Europe um, up until now. Um, in the future I do plan to uh, start doing a lot more long-term travel uh, in other parts of the world, other continents. Mm. Um, so I definitely want to uh, expand the coverage of the Nomadic Vegan um, and I would also really like to incorporate more activism in the form of outreach to restaurants, uh, to the places where I eat. Um, so. I plan to put together kind of little kits to help explain to the restaurant managers and owners and staff what veganism is, uh, how they can cater to vegan clientele, and why it's in their best interest to do so. And you know, give them examples of vegan dishes they they could add to their menu, or little easy um, adjustments that they could make to some of the dishes that they already serve to make them vegan. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, that's one thing that I would really plan to focus on. Do you think restaurants will have a good response to your suggestions? Well, we'll see. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure I'll get you know a variety of responses, mm. positive and negative. Um, but you know this movement is getting stronger and stronger every day and restaurants just like any other business respond to the market and if we tell them that this is what we want they're yeah. gonna deliver it so um, you know the more of us there are and the louder we are uh, in demanding this then uh, the more positive response we're gonna get um, so if I can show them for example you know that I have this many people following the blog that I have this mm. many likes on Facebook and, and Twitter and then they'll say oh well I, I've never heard of this vegan thing but I guess it really is a thing and I should listen to this um, so uh, yeah I hope that there will be a positive response overall we are currently based in Switzerland that's right so like what is the um, response to veganism in Switzerland? Yeah, it's interesting. Switzerland is, is it's a, quite a conservative country in a lot of ways in general and uh, kind of slow to change in, in many ways. And so veganism, I would say, is no exception to that. Um, the, the local cuisine, I mean, as you would expect, well, okay, Swiss, Switzerland, like the name of the country is synonymous <laughs> with cheese, with Swiss yeah. cheese, right? Um, and Swiss cheese is a very big part of the culture, as is meat, um, you know, because it's a mountainous region, it's up in the Alps, mm. and, um, you know, it lends itself to animal agriculture more than uh, the growing of crops in, in many areas of the country. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's growing, it, but it, it has a long, long way to go. Um, in traditional restaurants, Swiss restaurants, there aren't that many options, to be honest. But it's really not difficult to be vegan there because you're not limited to just the Swiss restaurants. You know, it, Particularly where I am, I live in Geneva, and it's such an international and multicultural city. So you can eat just literally any cuisine that you like, You know, whether it's Ethiopian, Eritrean, Chinese, 
Thai, Middle Eastern, um, you know, Italian, and all of those, you know, are very vegan-friendly cuisines. Mm. So uh, it's really not a problem to find. And we do have a couple of vegan restaurants in Geneva, and even in the supermarkets, I'm seeing more and more options in terms of plant-based milks and yogurts and some mock meats and things like that. So it's definitely happening. You mentioned like how Switzerland is kind of designed for like growing animals, mm -hmm. well producing animals and mm -hmm. like for cheese. So do you think veganism can be implemented everywhere? Like, <laughs> does, is it like a one fit design? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, talking about Switzerland, I would say yes, anyone in Switzerland can be vegan if they want to be, just about. I mean, of course, it depends on your social and economic situation, but overall, it's a very wealthy country. Uh, you know, there's a supermarket on every corner that has a gigantic produce aisle. Uh, you know, you have no problem finding vegan food there, even if you're in a tiny village. Um, you know, a hundred years ago, it would have been a different story, mm. but Switzerland now, Yes, the vast, vast majority, if not everyone, can be vegan without problem. Um, I'm not going to say that that's true in every corner of the world, because it's not, to be honest. You know, if you're an Inuit living in Greenland, or if you're you know, a nomadic herder living in the Sahel in Western Africa, um, then yes, you, you might have to depend on animals for your, for your survival, and I'm not going to go to those communities and tell them that they need to be vegan, because there are so many more of us who, who can be vegan without any problem right now. So uh, I would just focus the message on, on those people. And if those people go vegan, then um, we've already you know, overcome many, many of the problems facing the world today. Do you have any tips for people that want to go traveling? Sure, yeah. Um, like I said, you know, it's really, much easier than you probably think it is. Um, I've actually written an, uh, an ebook uh, about this uh, called Eight Steps for Fun and Easy Vegan Travel, um, which you can download for free on my website. So if you just go to thenomadicvegan.com, um, you'll see a banner right at the top there, and uh, you can sign up um, for the newsletter. So I also add in a few uh, tips there, which you'll get maybe once a month or so, and uh, you'll also have the, the ebook right away. So I think that's probably the easiest. Yeah. Thing to point people to. What do you think is the most effective way to encourage people to be vegan? Yeah, that's an interesting question <laughs> and one that I've thought a lot about and I'm not sure that I have the answer. Um, like I said, I mean, my initial injury point was health and I think that that's the case for a lot of people. So um, I wouldn't promote only health, um, but I do think that that is what uh, will often grab people's attention more than, you know, a video of, of slaughter in a slaughterhouse. People are just going to turn away from that and, and not want to see it and put a wall up. Mm. But if you can tell them you can save your own life this way and you can have a much, you know, more fulfilling life this way, um, then that's something that they might listen to. And if they then stop eating animals and their secretions for their own health, once they've stopped being a part of that, then they can be more open to the message of animal rights. So I think in some cases, it depends on the person, mm -hmm. uh, and we're all, each person is different and is going to respond to things differently. Um, but I'm, I'm not opposed to the health message, um, but I do encourage you know dropping in animal rights issues and environmental issues into that message as well. Why did you become vegan? Mm. Um, many reasons. I mean, I think initially it was uh, more about health and, and the environment and not so much the animals, um, but it's really the reverse now. I mean, I'm, I do it for all of those reasons. Mm -hmm. There are a million and one reasons to be vegan, um, but it's the animals that, that really drive me um, to, to spread this message as far as possible because I really... You know, it's, it's devastating what we're doing and it's completely unnecessary and so I want to uh, reduce suffering in the world as much as possible and the most effective way that anyone can do that is to be vegan. 
Do you have any tips for people that are thinking of going vegan? Yeah, um, I would say, first of all, just educate yourself, um, which maybe you've already done if you're thinking about it, but um, there are lots of great videos out there, um, documentaries. Uh, the top three, the kind of trilogy that I would recommend is Forks Over Knives for the health message, Cowspiracy for the environmental message, and Earthlings uh, for the animal rights message. And once you've watched those three, you really have the kind of whole picture and know what you need to know. Um, and then find your community. Find vegan people. If there aren't any around you in, in the town that you live in, find them online. Go on Facebook. There are so many vegan face gr Facebook groups um, and some that are uh, directed particularly to people who are making the transition or who are just curious about the vegan lifestyle. Uh, so reach out to those people. Feel free to reach out to me. I love answering Yay. questions. <laughs> uh, so you can t contact me. There's a contact page on the website and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but whether it's me or someone else, um, just reach out to someone. It's really important. I didn't know any vegans at the time mm. when I went vegan. Uh, I'd never met a vegan before and I just heard about it through things I saw online. Um, and it, it is really important um, to have that support because uh, it can, it can be lonely and, and overwhelming at the beginning, um, you know, when you don't know how to explain it to your friends and family and how to deal with the social situations. That's often the trickiest part of making the transition. It's not giving up the foods, uh, because that comes really naturally. Once you've awakened to, to what all this is, you really don't want to eat those foods anymore. I, I don't even view it as food. Um, and you discover all these new foods that are really delicious. Um, so I honestly enjoy food much more now than I did uh, before I became vegan. The tricky part can be the social, navigating the social situations. And so for that, it's great to have support. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck on your travels and vlog. Thanks so much.